so here's the client. Here are my servers, uh, my agents on a couple of servers, a couple of workstations um, in different IP address spaces. Um, the network that we're going to focus on today, though, is the 101083 network. Um, so I use a third party tool. Um, Advanced IP scanner is a good one, um, popular. And this is telling me, hey, right now on this network, these are the devices that are live. Um, so we'll just do a quick scan here. Um, and just to kind of run through these few IPs with you guys, I have my switch. I have uh, a Synology device at dot five, um, a Raspberry Pi at six, Netscaler giving out IPs at 31, 33, 34, and 231. And then I've got my domain controller, automate server, control server, a couple of Docker servers, and a wireless access point. That That's my home lab. Um, so this is the client. And this is uh, split out into locations already, but for now we're just going to focus on the main office location because these are all in the 10, 1083, and that's my hypervisor host that is running these VMs. That's actually my PC that I'm I'm using right now. So what we'll do is we'll open up Control, and we will enable the probe on this guy. Uh, that's fine. Okay, and we're not going to do anything else other than SNMP trap server. Now, just so you know, to do SNMP based remote monitors, you do not need to enable the trap server. There is this preconceived notion that just because I'm doing SNMP stuff with my probe, I need to have the SNMP trap server enabled. That is only needed if you want to set up your probe as a, spe you know, specifically as a trap server. Um, Dan, I know you want me to mention that uh, later on, so I'll go ahead and leave it enabled for now, and then we can obviously get to that a little later on. So I'm going to install this probe. It's set up. We'll click finish. We'll give it a minute here to actually enable the probe role, and then we'll start a discovery scan. <clears throat> And while it's doing the discovery scan, I'll then dive into the probe templates. Uh, show you guys that. So you what, I'm going to close this window. Reload system cache. The number of times this machine has been enabled and disabled from being a probe is crazy. All right. And hey, if something breaks in my system, we all break together and we all fix it together. It's fine. It's a learning experience every day. All right. All right. So here's my network probe. Pretty vanilla, right? Um, just go through the settings with you guys super quick. So I have my one network here, my 101083. That's obviously added because this is the agent's home subnet. Uh, so it's going to scan every hour between 1 a.m. and 7 a.m. Um, it's going to check for online, offline status every minute of the devices that it discovers. MAC address scanning. This is basically going to say, I want you to use the ARP table on the probe agent to also validate MAC addresses with IP addresses. So if I do this, op a here is the op table. So it's going to use that as an additional source of reference for when correlating MAC addresses to IPs. Um, actually, one thing I am going to do before we start a scan is delete stuff from here. You won't need to do this. I'm only doing this just because I want the logs and such to be fresh when we go look at them. Uh, and so would you say that MAC address scanning setting should be on for the most part? Is that correct? Now, the reason why it's not enabled out of the box is because there is a warning against that setting. So it seems kind of counterproductive to warn you about something that we're going to enable. The reason why you would, well, a scenario where you would not want to enable this is if you had an environment with proxy app and you have, say, 50 workstations on the other side of a switch, all reporting with the MAC address of that interface on the switch, traffic is flowing through. 
So you'll have like 50 device, <clears throat> you'll have like 50 computers, typically workstations on the other side of that switch. They all have their own IP addresses. They all have their own MAC addresses, but because of proxy up, they all report as the same MAC address. And because automate, you know, we live and die by the Mac, you're going to have a lot of, you're just going to have a very hard time. Uh, you're going to have a bunch of agents all reporting in with the same uh, MAC address, different agent IDs, and it's just going to be a complete mess. Um, there is an article out there in the doc system, um, an official doc regarding MAC address scanning. And if you do have proxy up, or if you do have automate agents that are running through a, for instance, Cisco, any connect VPN, um, there's like a use case now. I updated that documentation about, oh man, all the weeks are blending together, maybe about three months ago now, um, two or three months ago, like with a use case and examples of how you would set this setting uh, for those kind of scenarios. But yeah, th this is only gonna use the ARP table on the agent itself as an additional source of reference. This is not using all the ARP tables against all of the devices that I discovered. <clears throat> um, data collection, I'm gonna leave that disabled for now. Um, so SNMP, so in my home lab, um, I do have an actual community string that I use, it's MK home lab, you know, super, super obvious there, I guess. Um, okay, so here's the receive tab, SNMP trap server. Yes, I want that to be listening on 162. And deployment, we're not gonna talk about that one today. So um, now if I go over to my probe control, we will see that this registry key will, when I refresh, change from a zero to a one. And I now have a probe service key. In this probe service key, I have multiple things. I have my network devices. Well, obviously we've not discovered anything yet. A device library, detection templates, and collection templates. We'll come to that a little later. Um, one other thing we need to do is a net stat. It's either NAB or OAB. And we wanna see that port, uh, what was it? 162 is owned by the um, LTSVC process. So let's, like, let's take a little look at this. Uh, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because of other networking tools. Okay, there it is. UDP 162 LTSVC. Now, sometimes you will have another network management tool on your probe that could be um, Orvic. That's, that's the big one really, isn't it? Let's just be honest. A lot of people install the Orvic collector on the same server as the probe because they want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of what those tools can see from the same location inside the network. Now, on this particular probe, I have disabled my Orvic collector. And the reason why I did that is because it was owning port 162 and also 512 for syslog. So when you're throwing things at this server, whether it be syslogs or traps, you're not gonna find anything coming to you in Automate because as soon as this agent receives those messages on those ports, it goes to the Orvic management suite, not the Automate one. So if there are times when you set up the SNMP trap and the syslog and also the TFTP, just be sure that LTSVC Automate is owning those ports. So that's the first thing you should do. If you find that Orvic is owning these ports, then the simple thing to do is just stop the Orvic service. And then you can also um, restart the LTSVC service and then you'll see that the LTSVC service now owns that port. Once you can confirm that, you should then be able to start the Orvic services again, and the port should then stay with LabTech or the Automate process. Does that make sense? Can have both services running. You just have to make sure LabTech owns 162. Yes. Yep. Okay. Quickest way I've found to do that is to stop Orvic, restart 
automate and then start Avic. Could that like reset if you know you reboot the PC and the Avic service starts before? Yep. Okay. Yep. You probably change the Avic service listing port somewhere. I don't know where or anything, but. Uh, yeah, you can. And in the same, you know, on the flip side, you can change these ports too. You know, yeah. just know that you would now then have to go to each of your network devices and tell the SNMP traps and the syslogs to go to different ports. But yes, you, you, you can change the ports on both applications. All right. So uh, all the rest is very vanilla, right? Uh, I've got no devices. I've got no traps set up. I've got no syslog set up. Um, I think I do. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, we'll get to that later. And let's just go ahead and start a scan. That should take about 10 minutes. Um, so while that's going, let's do this real quick. Um, do I have Beartail on here? No, probably not. PowerShell, that works. Um, <laughs> okay, so here's the start of my scan. See the ping sweep has started, and these are the IPs that it's seen, which, you know, match up pretty similar to these guys. So the scan really shouldn't take long. Um, so detection templates, this is the big one. So in true Blue Peter style, and I think only one other person on the call will understand that reference, Here's some I created earlier. So the way that the probe detection template works, that currently, right now in the system, they are configured where it's device type first and then manufacturer and then the model. So I asked uh, the developer who originally put these in place a long time ago, why did you do it that way? Because if I'm creating a manufacturer here, I can just choose, oh, excuse me, I can pick a device type here. And as we all probably know, not every NAS disk or router or UPS system or you know, camera scanner has a single OID to tell me it is, a device, it is a particular device type. So what we did is we basically flipped the logic where we now run from a manufacturer first model, well, uh, approach, <laughs> and then after we've got the manufacturer, we can then, if we need to, break it down into model. And when I say if we need to, what I mean by that is this, APC. Every manufacturer has their own way of doing their SNMP implementation. Now, I highly doubt APC are going to re-architect or change around values um, for different types of their appliances. Now I can understand where it would be different for certain, like a line of models, like this is a smart UPS 1000, the smart UPS 1050, 1300, 1500, 2000. They're all probably gonna have the same stats that we're looking for, such as, you know, temperature, CPU, you know, all the obvious things like um, upgrade status. I imagine that they'd all be in the in the same OID regardless of model. Now, APC might do another line of UPS devices where it's completely different. The reason why it's completely different is probably because they purchased that from another manufacturer. And that old manufacturer, their SNMP, SNMP implementation was done a different way. So I can understand how, you know, that would change. So yes, I've broken it out into specific models, but you only really need to go as far down as you need to when it comes to the monitoring. So if you have, you know, six or seven different smart UPS models, you don't really need to create six or seven smart UPS detection templates. You could just create the one smart UPS. And then, you know, maybe as and when and if you see a variation of where these stats are placed in the SNMP implementation, 
okay, yeah, then you'd probably want to start branching that out into different uh, models. Now, one thing that I always tell everybody is if you think of the SNMP OID tree as a registry key, right? We're all very familiar with registry keys, right? We all know where things are located. And, it, and even if we don't know, we can use, you know, a little bit of common sense here and say, oh, here we go, Oracle, Java deploy, you know, all. we can we can see exactly, I mean, there's not much going on here on the, on the right hand side, but we can, oh, so, uh, there we go, there's a good example. So 7-Zip, I don't know where it puts their registry keys, but just by clicking around and having a little poke, we can find it. Well, that's just the same as an SNMP implementation, but the difference is we don't get words, we just get numbers. So when people start saying, you know, 1.3.6, 1.4.1, 224.3.5.7, that means nothing to anybody. This is where we need the MIB file. The Aww. MIB file basically tells you what each of those numbers um, represent. And it's a different branch. So here, you know, we've got the computer branch, then we've got the local machine, and we have the software. Then we have the seven zip and then we have the path. So this is very, so if you, you know, if you make the comparison between the two, this is very similar to an SNMP implementation. If we go back to automate, I think that scan is finished. No, nope, still going. That's fine. We'll leave it there. So. So here you'll see that I've got a bunch of different manufacturers in here already, and I'm going to create one here in a moment for one of the devices, which I hope we, uh, oh, there we go, scan's finished, cool. Okay. And that looks pretty good. All right, so we have my switch, we have my Synology, we have my Raspberry Pi, a wireless access point, two Docker servers, and a net scale of virtual IP. Okay, cool. Oh, one sec. I'm gonna mute. I can hear a lot of background noise from someone, sorry. All right, um, guys, if you wanna say something, just unmute yourself, it's fine. <clears throat> so here we go. My scan's complete. I have found seven, yeah, seven devices. And right now they are still initializing. This is fine. This is expected. And if we go to the, here we go. So what have we got? So the pink sweep finished. I found the home lab switch. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Ah. Okay, this is good. So <clears throat> this particular line, this device detected IP 000. Awesome. So what this is telling us is literally, hey, on one of your devices, I found this MAC address, but I don't have an IP address for it. So layer two, MAC, switch table, layer three, IP, ARP table. What we've basically done here is we've walked a bridge table of a device to collect MAC addresses. And then when we walk the same device's ARP table to then look at that MAC address and compare it to a, and correlate it to an IP, we didn't see the IP because probably the ARP table or the bridge table hangs around the data in there a little longer than the ARP table does maybe for this device. Every vendor is a little bit different on how they manage this stuff. So what we're saying is, hey, I found this MAC address, but I have no idea about the IP. So therefore, I'm not gonna bring it in. Now, let's just say you have a Radius server, maybe. Well, you keep a log of all the MAC addresses in your Radius server. You might be able to do a little bit of side-by-side -side comparison here and say, oh yeah, that is um, Tom's phone. He was here yesterday, hadn't, doesn't have an IP address anymore because the lease expired. But hey, there's some information about my network. Right, we can only bring in a device. A device can only be classed as discovered if we have both a MAC and an IP address. So this log is looking 
great. Um, we've got an export here of the network itself in an XML. That gets sent up to the server, which we then use to populate a particular table to draw a map. It is this table. And then when you click on the network map uh, page, it basically uses API to, well, it communicates to the database via an API, and then it draws what it thinks your network looks like. This is a very, very flat network. And let, you know, just for shits and grins here, let's see what my map looks like. Uh, okay. So we have my switch at the top, which is good. We have my Raspberry Pi, my Synology, and my wireless access point. Yep, they're all plugged into the switch. An internet connection, gotta need one of those. And a black box. So the black box is basically something is here. I don't know what it is, but from this device, I see these. And these are my Netscaler. Uh, 101 is a Docker server, another Docker server at 102, my Automate, my Control, and my DCL1 VMs. So while that does say black box, I know this is my Hyper-V host and undefined. I, what else is plugged into this thing? I don't know. I'm literally looking at my switch right now and I don't know what that is, but oh well. So this is a pretty decent map. I can see my switch at the top. I can see what's plugged into it and I can see what is plugged into my Hyper-V host. And these are the VMs. So that's, that's a pretty decent map. So let's see what the status is of these. Is this gonna refresh? Okay, cool. So here's my Synology. This is one that I wanna play with today. Uh, for the monitors. Um, is everybody following so far? Any questions? No, no, all good, mate. Yep, cool. All right, so let's go back to SNMP stuff. All right, so I've had several clients. I've been building up detection templates over time, but now I need one for a Synology. Never managed one before. So let's go check it out. I'm gonna open up the device. And as you can see, it's filled in the community string based off the settings that I changed earlier on, remember? I changed it to MK Home Lab from public. Um, it's on V2. There's a little bit of information about that device. This is great. Now, because I have an SNMP community string here, I can now walk the device. This tab, by the way, the only thing that activates this tab is the presence of any text whatsoever in the SNMP field. And I'll show you this. So you can see right now, this is my Docker server, Docker 01, 101. I'm just gonna type in a letter here. Doesn't really matter what it is. You'll notice the tab is not there. Go ahead and click save. No, no, close that. Do a quick little refresh. Open it up again. There is my A and there is my tab. So if you if you find that some of your SNMP remote monitors aren't working, nine times out of 10, it's because the device doesn't have um, SNMP string associated with it, whether it be right or wrong. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because I don't need it, but that is literally the only thing that activates this tab so long as you have something in this field. Tell you what, while we're here, give it a friendly name. Docker01, save. All right, so rule of thumb, guys, when we have SNMP connectivity to a device, we do read certain um, values from it all the time. Um, one of those is uptime. Another one is system description, which I'll do a quick walk here and we'll we'll see what that looks like. Um, before I do that, though, I'm going to close this. There's good reason for that. I'm gonna reopen it and get fast talk. 
going. I should speed things up a little bit. All right, fast talk, network devices, Synology, there he is. All right, SNMP Explorer, let's give it a walk. Let's just limit this to 30 for now. We don't really need a crazy amount and then we'll send the command. A big, um, uh, topic with support is when I go to walk my device, it fails right away. Uh, the reason for that is the SNMP string is either wrong or the mode has not been set. I'll show you what that, I'll show you what I mean by that here in a moment. Go to main. So you'll see that I have my SNMP string that is correct and the SNMP version. Make sure that the string is correct and the version is also V2C. All right. So every time we have SNMP connectivity to a device, we are going to get more information about it. So we always bring back the results of 1.1, 1.3, which is the uptime. Um, we also bring back the name, 1.5. And I don't, yeah, we actually do bring back the contact and the location as well. So this is why I say, you know, rule of thumb, if you see an uptime here, that confirms you have SNMP connectivity to it. If you was expecting to see an uptime from this device, dot six, because it's your, I don't know, switch or wireless access point or something, if there's no uptime, that just shows you, that just tells you that we do not have SNMP connectivity to it. If we did, we'd have a time. So, uh, yeah. All right, so I wanna create a detection template for this particular device. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm gonna start it from scratch here. I've actually removed it from my system just because I didn't have one. But this is basically how you go about doing this. Uh, do, 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 do. What time is it? Oh, we got plenty of time. All right, so I'm gonna create a responded device. I'm gonna add a device. The device I'm gonna add is Synology. I'm gonna apply that. All right, so it's in my list. And I'll refresh this. Can we refresh? There he is, Synology. So now what I wanna do is I wanna create a detection template for Synologies. So I'm going to add the detection template and we're going to call this one NFG Synology. Its protocol is SNMP. It applies to responded device and the results found will appear in the Synology. Uh, uh, we'll just say group for now. Uh, the device type I'm going to set here because, well, at least for me, you know, Synology only do NAS drives. Um, obviously, if this was Dell or HP or other vendors that do multiple device types, you probably wouldn't want to set that yet. Um, so I'm going to give this a Synology manufacturer, and I'm going to leave the model out for now. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So where this manufacturer and model comes in is here. You got manufacturer, and then you got, well, there is a column on another grid that says model. Um, now, you'll see here that this says Synology Incorporated, even though I've not really defined that yet. For those that don't know, that is populated by a table called Mac table. And if I just do a quick search, yeah. All right, so 001132. So what that's telling me is if the device starts off with that MAC address, I'm just going to auto populate the, um, the manufacturer with that. And there we go, 001132. So that's how manufacturers are stamped onto devices. It's just from the MAC table. Uh, you'll notice as well on here, I have my, this, some, this on your systems, your Hyper-V VMs, you'll probably find that it actually just says Microsoft Corporation for me, it says Hyper-V VM, 
that's just because I edited this field in my database. So that's why it says something different. It's really useful if you do that, especially with VMware and Hyper-V. So now instead of all your Hyper-V VMs and ESX VMs just saying VMware Corp or VMware Inc and Microsoft Corp, you can go into the database table, Mac table, edit the company for the Mac addresses, and then you'll, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see the new names. All right, where were we? Sorry, here. All right, so manufacturer, we're gonna call it Synology, and then we're gonna create uh, a rule for this template. So the rule, I'm gonna call this detection rule, Synology, I wanna match uh, an expression, and that expression, copy this from my handy dandy notebook. So let me uh, fill this in. All right, so what I'm saying here is if the following OID, if DSM is, uh, you know, in this particular OID, I want you to stamp this device as a Synology or detect this device as a Synology. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and I'm going to hit Apply. Think of these very similar to config, config, role detections, and virus scanners. That's probably the best one. So a role, so I'll tell you what, here's one I created a few weeks ago, so I'm familiar with this one. So basically, AV scanners, we all know these, right? If this file exists and if this process exists, I want you to declare my AV installed as Sentinel-1. Well, it's exactly the same thought process uh, for this. If this particular OID contains this particular text, stamp it as a Synology, right? So we're going to take this one layer further just because I want to. So if I now click on Synology, all right, so here we go. So now off of the Synology, I'm going to create another device and we're going to call this one uh, model. Uh, do, 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 do. No, we're not. Oh, DS416. Click apply. And again, going back to what I said earlier on, if you've got a ton of DS series synologies, you only probably just need to create one called DS series because all the model numbers on that will probably, you know, the, the stats for the device are probably under the same OIDs. So here we go. I've created the device. Now I'm going to create a detection template for this device. Again, just like the virus scanner and the role detection. So this is going to be called model Synology DS416. Device type, yes, this is an as. I don't have to specify a manufacturer because I specified that on the layer above, but I'm just going to do it anyway. And here, I'm going to specify the model DS416. And now I'm going to create the rule. Uh, DR, what did I call this? Synology DS416. You don't have to be as verbose as this. This is just my OCD, so don't mind me. And again, paste that in. And if the OID that ends in 510 contains DS416, well, I want to classify you as a um, Synology DS416. I'm actually going to take a copy of this because I want to show you something here in a minute. Uh, so I'm going to click OK. There it is. And apply. Now, if I go back to my library and I refresh. I now have a detection template in place for Synology. And to break it down even further, I have one for a DS416 model specific. Um, this could also be DS series if you wanted. Now, in another thing, this rule could be 
let's just say this rule is absolutely perfect and it will absolutely detect the device, no problem whatsoever. However, if this rule for Synology is wrong, this will never be evaluated, right? So to work down the tree, you first have to be a discovered device. What is a discovered device? Well, it's basically any device on this list, right? The next step is responder device. This is your internal test, AKA, do I have SNMP connectivity to you? Well, let's have a look. Yes, I have it on these three devices. Okay, cool. So these are now my responded devices, these three. Taking that one step further, out of my responded devices, are any of you Synology? And I'm saying you're a Synology because this OID contains that. Okay, cool. Hey, Synologies, do any of you also have this particular OID matching this particular value? Oh, you do? Okay, cool. Well, in that case, you're a DS416. Just like how we would create detection for an AV product or a uh, role definition. Uh, inventory. All right, so now what we have to do is run detection on the thing. Now, um, I'm gonna show you this. If I go back to my probe, oops, I need a drink, one sec. Are you all following the detection template stuff so far? Any questions about that? So the the stuff the te detection templates you were just building you hadn't done any like MIB imports or anything these are all just building based off of what the SNMP walks found. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, do I have MIBs in my system? Yes, I do. However, you do not need a MIB to walk a device. Okay, good. All a MIB does is tell you what the one, two, three, four, five, six numbers or the OIDs represent. And there will be times when you walk a device. Whoops. No. Do, 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 do. All right. So have you ever walked a device and you have lots of red X's here? Yeah. So what that means is, okay, one, three, six, one, two, one, nine, one, four, three. Well, the value is 82, but there's a red X here. Basically means I don't know what this means. I don't know what this represents, but I do know that the value is 82. Now, if I go here, I can see, like these are all obviously tick because I've got a lot of MIBs in my in uh, my setup. I can see which MIB is giving me the description of like 91210 means nothing to anybody, but the MIB will tell you what it means. And this is what it means. This is a description. So you can still walk a device just fine without a MIB. And you can still do everything that we're going to do today without a MIB, just fine. It's just, unless you know what the odds represent, you're gonna be a little, uh, you, you, you might not be sure what you're looking for. Now you could always, you know, Google, you know, what odds to monitor on a Synology and you'll just get a post there saying, hey, 1.5 is CPU, 1.2 is power, 1.4 is RAID. Okay, cool. Well, you don't need a MIB now because you know what those values represent. But that's why you'll get the red X's. Thanks. Yep. All right, so uh, what was I gonna do? Oh, I was gonna take a drink. Okay. Um, oh, yes, detection, that was it. Okay, so we've created a detection template for the Synology DS416. And I also, in my home lab, have a Micritic switch. And we can see that I've already detected this because right after a device discovery is run, one of the final processes of a device discovery is device detection. Basically, hey, you just found seven devices. Can you try and detect some of these? Detect means, you know, classify some of these. Well, that one was already done because in the 
probe registry keys, we have a detection template. And we have 58 of them. OK. Didn't know we had that many. Uh, where are we? Um, and Oh, Mikrotik. All right. So here is, uh, OK, so you like how we went to this tree earlier on and there was already a bunch in there, right? And we just added the Synology. Mikrotik was already there. And um, the switch was already there as well. The reason for that is because the probe already had a detection template for them. Uh, if we go down this list, they're somewhat alphabetical. Where are you? Uh, there it is. Mikrotik, CRS 12524 port uh, switch, gig switch. So we just created a detection template for Synology and also for a model, but the probe is not aware of that yet. So what we need to do is send an update config to the probe. This is very similar to when you um, when you make a change to a virus scanner or a roll def. Well, you need to send a standard update config command. So the agent is aware of that new definition. Well, for a probe, and detection templates, it's a refresh config. So we'll go ahead and send that. We'll let that command complete. If this was a Twitch stream, I'd have some really uh, comical hold music right now. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, let's just go back to the probe. So we've got 58 here, 56, 50, that's, oh yeah, because I deleted one, and yeah, all right. So let's just press F5, okay, 59 and 60 are there. So 59 is what? My new Synology, okay, cool. And then 60 is the Synology model itself. Okay, so now that we've confirmed that the probe has the detection templates on hand, let's go ahead and watch this not work spectacularly as we run a device detection. All right. So before we do, uh, let's do this real quick. Refresh. All right, so it's still Synology Incorporated, not Synology. So if you don't have a detection template configured for your devices, the information in the Mac table, database table, will win. If you do have a detection, sorry, I said that backwards. If you have a detection template assigned for a device, the detection template manufacturer wins. That's just put here as a placeholder from that table. If I refresh this, see now it's changed to Synology. It's now changed to a NAS disk because I specified that in my detection template. Now, if I go to a different device grid, uh, MK Home Lab, got devices, Synology, boom, there it is. It's a Synology, the model is DS416. Um, it's a NAS disk. I have a little bit of info here, the description, flags. I, I think that, let me think, let me think. Oh, I can't remember what that means. Oh, uh, <laughs> one of my drives is in use out of a four bay. Synology. I think that's what that means. Or at least that's what I'm educated guess. That's what it's referring to. So yeah, um, there we go. This device has been detected properly. And yeah, Synology DS14, good stuff. So SNMP monitors, this is the best bit. And this is really what it was all for. But I wanted to give a bit of background to this because if you've not got these foundations in place, SNMP remote monitors will just, you know, you'll you'll have a hard time. Uh, so I'm sorry if I'm going over stuff that you guys already know, but it's a recording. So for the benefit of others, I guess it makes sense. Okay, so now that I have detected that correctly, I'm back in my template manager and I see, yep, there you go. There's my Synology uh, now appearing under the Synology branch and the DS14, uh, 416, sorry, uh, here it is. So that's that's pretty awesome. So 
Now what I'm going to do, this is the fun stuff. I'm going to go to groups and out of the box, there is a ton of network device groups, which would, which go back to the network device packs that are available in the solution center. So what I did is I deleted all of that junk and I created three groups. One, network devices. This is purely organizational. There's no auto join search in here whatsoever. This is just for the sake of a folder. Uh, grayed out master group because that's the that's what everybody's doing these days. Um, network probe. <laughs> this group, this group's just convenient uh, because I don't want to have to click back to clients, delve through all my different clients, hit a location, finally hit the probe. This is just convenient. All my probes are just going to be here in the list. And my responded devices, which we know I only have. Oh, sorry. One sec. Let me open this group. There you go. There's the auto join search, agent probe. And responded devices group. This is joined by a search. I'm going to go to that search here in a minute. I'll tell you what, I'll do it now. Why not? Uh, yeah, we'll do that now. And here are my responded devices. So remember now, going back to this tree, you're discovered, you're responded, SNMP. Automation, searches, view searches. Again, out of the box from, well, out of the box slash solution center. Um, there is an absolute shit ton of device searches as well. I removed all of those. And what I did is, um, oh, that's strange, that's in the wrong, oh no, it's not. Uh, let's go here. I'll tell you what, we'll stay here just for a moment. Okay, so here's my responded devices search. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna open that up. Here it is. And I've changed the search to, you know, from computers to network devices. And it's simply this, if device library, oops, network device library type equals respond device. So this list here is your device library. So Adtran, Arrowhive, APC, Apple, Asterisk, etc. That's your device library. Once you've created a device in your library, this is where you would then right click it to create a detection template for it. And remember when you right click on a manufacturer to add a device, that add device will add it on the layer below that. So, so if I move that over, uh, okay. So device library type responded device. So basically these guys. Now what I can do is I can create a new search for my Synologies. Uh, there he is, Synology. Uh, search, yeah, that's right. So now I'm gonna rename this MFG. Technology. I'm going to take that star off and save. Save as new search. Yes. Okay. Fine. Okay. So I have now created a search for my Synology devices. Now, again, guys, this is a home lab. I don't have oodles of network devices, um, but let's just, you know, like how you create a search for SQL Server 2020 or 2018, whatever. Um, all of your SQL Server, oh, let's just do domain controllers. All of your domain controllers are in a group, regardless of client. So that way you can apply a remote monitor on all domain controllers that look for a particular value. And then when you onboard your next client who obviously have a domain controller, that monitor just gets inherited and pushed down to their domain controller, right? That's pretty much automate 101 stuff, right? So what we're doing here is that exact same philosophy approach to Synology devices. So now when I onboard my clients, I don't, you know, and if they have a Synology, okay, cool. 
you are now in this search and I can now do something with that collection of Synology devices, just like how I can do something with that collection of domain controllers. Okay, so we're gonna close this window and then we're gonna go back to, <laughs> again, Blue Peter style, only one other person will know what I mean, network device libraries. So here they all are. These are some I created. I'll give you a Blue Peter badge for this, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so here is one I prepared earlier. I'm actually going to delete this one because I don't want to be seen as cheating. Oh. Screw it. All right. Anyway, so let me delete the one that I just made because I have to. And Synology. Come on. All right. I thought I deleted this. I guess I didn't. Oh, well. So here we go. Look, I've just created a search for Synology and boom, there's my Synology. But you saw it work a moment ago. So, you know, believe me, this stuff does work. OK, so now that I have my Synologies in a search, I can now use these for a remote monitor. And I'll show you what I mean by that. And again, I'm using Synology in this example, and I only have one Synology in this example. Just imagine. This Synology, this could be any manufacturer. This could be domain controller, RDS server, terminal server, DHCP, D whatever your search is for, doesn't really matter. And of course, you can have multiple Synologies returning in the search. So, uh, whoa, wrong window. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I have my Synologies in a group. Now let's go back to my, well, filtered in a search. So now I'm gonna go to this group, responded devices. I'm gonna open up this group. I'm gonna go to network devices. And I'm gonna go to monitors. All right. So I already have one monitor in place here, just because, uh, just to show you guys, uh, what I'm going to build here. So again, think of this as a group of domain controllers. If you like, you have remote monitors on them. Now you're mon like now you're managing the devices. Very similar to how you're monitoring things on agents. So here is my monitor. It's a upgrade status check. It. I'll tell you what. Let's go to the details. All right. So. This is an SNMP OID check monitor, and it's going to look at this particular OID on a device. If that OID equals, if the result of this check is two, that's obviously a good thing, right? Remember, remote monitors, you're putting in good conditions. So if it equals two, the monitor passes. For Synology's perspective, this particular OID will change based on the actual value on the Synology itself. So let's go ahead and Take a peek. Uh, it used to be at 12, not anymore. All right, admin. Do, do, do. All right, so here's my Synology. Let's go to the control panel. Update and restore. All right, so my DSM version is up to date. That's awesome. Because it's up to date, that value of that OID is going to be two. Now, this is obviously where you would hit the Googles and, you know, check out the Synology documentation and find out the OID value that you really need. I think off the top of my head here, one means it's out of date. Three means the firmware has been downloaded, but not installed and four means it's not being downloaded or installed, I think. But anyway, I know two is a good condition. So now if I was to onboard and detect, successfully detect Synology devices, they are going to receive this monitor. Now, this group, you'll say, you said, you know, hey, it's responded devices, this is all of your devices. I don't want to look for a Synology out of date monitor on a Micratic switch or on a Netscaler because it's irrelevant and those OIDs don't even exist. 
and I'll get alerts because, you know, the monitor failed because the, monitor, the OID doesn't exist. Well, that's fine. That's the point of the search. You use it as a limit to. So you create the monitor and when you create the monitor, just an FYI, and you'll see this in a minute, you can't specify the limit to when you create the thing, but you can, if you click, <laughs> go back to the monitor and change it to the, manuf oops, to the manufacturer that you want it to be. So just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and create a new monitor. Um, I won't duplicate this one. I'll make one from scratch just so you can see this. You know, something's got to go wrong at least once in a recording, right? So here we go. I'm on the responded devices uh, group. I'm going to create an SNMP monitor. I'm going to click next. And the OID that I want to look for is uh, system temp. I really want to make sure that this thing's not heating up. So there's my OID. I'm going to click next. Uh, actually, before I do this, let me check something. Sorry. Ah, refresh. This window is a bit buggy, but you know, is, what isn't? Um, yeah, that should be fine. Okay, yep, yeah, cool, we're good. All right, so I'm gonna refresh this. I'm gonna add SNMP monitor next. Here's my OID for system temperature. I know that just because I've, you know, I created it earlier, now I'm rebuilding it. <laughs> uh, click next. All right, I want this to run every hour. Oh no, every two hours is fine. Again, home lab. Okay, so I'm setting a good condition. So if this is less than 50, I'm okay with that. Go ahead and click next. When to alert. Let's just go for the second time. Why I select the second time is this. Let's say it's every two hours. Well, the first instance technically will start the clock. And then the second consecutive time is two hours later. So if over a two hour duration, this thing has had temperature of over 50, then I want to know about it. If it's over 50 for like 30 minutes, I don't really care. Now, obviously, depending on what it is that you're monitoring, that may obviously change for you. But especially like whenever I'm monitoring services on agents, I always have those remote monitors checking the services every 60 seconds and the alerts per style is set to twice. The first instance of the stop service starts the clock. And if it's still stopped 60 seconds later, okay, now give me an alert. All right, so the alert template, I'm just going to do default do nothing here. It's really fine. Um, well, actually, no, I'll just do a create ticket. Screw it. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Oh, here. Okay. So ticket category, uh, hardware, port category, SNMP checks. Fine. Go ahead and click next. Subject. Now. The golden rule about monitors that you want, have, want to have them auto-close, the subject has to be the same for success and failure. So let's just do um, Synology system temp alert. I'll tell you what, let's have some fun. System running hot. Tell you what, I'm not going to put three of those because that probably means something in automate world, doesn't it? All right, so there we go. I'm going to click next and give the monitor a name. Now you'll see here that I've kind of prefixed this with the name of the manufacturer. The reason why I'm doing this is because I have full intention of adding a ton of monitors to this one group. And by organizing them with manufacturer first, when you sort the list by name, it obviously becomes a little easier. So this is system temp, 50 degrees. Oops. Mm. 
so I'm looking for something that's less than 50 degrees, but obviously I want to call the monitor greater than 50 degrees because that's when it actually uh, alerts me. So I click next and finish. Now you'll see here that it is not limited to anything. It's going to hit all three of my devices in this group. So very quickly before it installs, I need to change it to where it's relevant and then hit update and then refresh. Okay, so you'll see here that it did install it on the three devices because I wasn't quick enough with the limit two, but that's okay. Um, I have a pretty, you know, I'm pretty confident that will drop to one in a, you know, in due course. But anyway, um, the reason why I applied it to three is because obviously in this group, I have three devices. So if I click on this device, I think you can open the devices from here. This is fine. And then I can look at my monitors. All right, so right now the system temp, is it greater than 50? No, it's not, it's 36. That's awesome. So let's, uh, let's play with this. Let's change the monitor to be 30. Uh, where are you? This one. Maybe if I change the monitor, you know, it'll reinstall and probably just remove from uh, greater than uh, one minute, less than 30 is fine. Greater than equal to 30 is fine. Okay, so now we'll update this. Refresh. Just so you know, guys, this screen is a little buggy. Um, you do have to hit refresh a little more often than you would do on the remote monitors tab for a computer. Just keep that in mind. All right, so now we can, yeah. So I'll tell you what, while that's installing, uh, let's go ahead and create another one. Add SNMP next ID. All right, so let's go for, I don't know, raid status. Okay, so raid status on a Synology is this particular OID. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. I'm gonna have this run every hour because that seems a little bit more relevant than temperature. Well, more pertinent than a temperature. All right, so a good value for this is one. I'm going to set it to a second time, create ticket. Ticket and report category doesn't really mean anything unless you're really doing anything with like say service boards in manage. So I'm just setting this just for the fun of it. I don't have a manage integration. Uh, click next. And this one is going to be um, Synology raid alert. For the purposes of this demo here, I'm not too fussed about the message, but you can obviously change this. And just so you know, if you press F2, you get a list of available variables to you in this field. That's available pretty much everywhere in the product. Just so you know, if you press F2, you get the drop down list. So, which is pretty cool. Anyway. Click next, monitor name, Synology, raid, status. Now, if we're quick, that was pretty quick. All right, so in a moment here, we'll see that will just say one uh, for when it installs. Uh, that one didn't update yet, well, that's fine. All right, any questions so far?
this is the SNMP remote monitor. I know it did take us a little while to get to this point on the call, and this is kind of all what the call was for. But again, I just wanted to kind of give you a bit of a background as up to, you know, if you don't have the search right, then none of this will work. And the search relies on the detection template. So if you don't have that right, again, it's like a domino effect and it all starts with the detection template. If you're not quick enough, you know, like we've installed on those three monitors, say you've got 1300 devices or whatever. Yeah. Will that, how, how, how will it remove that monitor? Is there a, a way of forcing that to remove? Yeah. Uh, you can, uh, you can, um, you can, you can actually just remove the monitor, right? Um, you can also, if you're very concerned about it, you could always just create a group, uh, under here called, you know, in. just Synology, right? Yeah, like yeah. you could, you could create a group for your Synologies. You could create a group for your insert manufacturer here, I guess. Right. So that way, and then once you create that group, you will then, instead of applying the remote, the responded devices search, you would apply, you know, straight up, you know, I don't know, Kyocera, right? Or Olivetti. I know they're kind of interchangeable. And then, you know, that way, when you apply that Kyocera monitor to the group and it's all of the group, it's okay because it is literally just all of your Kyoceras. The only reason why I haven't broken it out into subgroups is because I am in a home lab. Um, but again, this is just more of a proofing the concept of this, as opposed to this is exactly how you do this. Um, there, there are going to be times where you want to purposely have groups for manufacturers just because you want, you know, because you just want to, right, for no other reason than that. Um, it's not a functional gain. It's not a productive gain. It's just because you want to, and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. So let's go take a peek at this. Uh, oh, I can close that. I'll get rid of that. All right, so here we go. Here's my NAS drive. All right. So here's my uh, oh, I need to change the uh, duration on that so we actually see the ticket. Ah, one sec. Uh, groups. So yeah, I I have a home lab, so everything for me I can just keep at the responded devices level, and I can just be quick on the draw. Oh, there we go. It it already did it. Did you see that? It's now a one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so let me change the duration of this because we're never gonna get a ticket here. Interval. Um, yeah, screw it, let's just make it 60. Uh, update. Refresh, 60 seconds. Okay, cool. All right. So that will update the monitor on the device. So you'll notice that in this group, there are no computers, right? No remote monitors against computers. This is all joined and operated on the network device monitors. The member list is here. Now, obviously we have the probe name for each of these devices. So if we go to the probe, this is what we'll see. Uh, main office, computers, control. Oh, I was already on. <laughs> I already had it open. Oh. And I'll go to my monitors. All right. So if we scroll down a little bit, there we go. So we have a RAID status, um, and you can see here the source on these. So you got network devices, responder devices. System status, that's just local on the agent itself. And um, this is actually, I'm actually kind of glad that's there because I'll show you something in a minute. Um, Synology, again, 
on the group, now uh, responder devices, upgrade status on the group. So, you know, when you're creating a remote monitor on an agent for something, you know, agent based, let's just say it's a service monitor, right? Um, you want to create the monitor on one machine and then once you're happy with it, then apply it to a group, right? That's typically the way that people install remote monitors, apply it to an agent first and then send it to a group. So you'll see here that this particular monitor is looking for system status. Let's just double click on that guy. Let's look at its configuration. So we've got raise alert once config. Okay. So here's my Synology 83.5. Um, and if this OID has a result of one, that's good. So we've confirmed that this monitor works on the Synology because we used the probe to just, you know, go to that device directly. Now, if we look at the device as well, we'll see that we've only got these three monitors, but it's like, well, wait a minute, there's four of them. Why am I only seeing three? Well, the only reason why you're seeing these three is because these are added on the device level, right? The host is literally running the remote monitor while running on the probe itself. The group adds them to, it's like this monitor is on the system status is on the probe, on the probe agent, the local agent. These three monitors that we've created in the group, wait, wrong window. Ah, sorry. These three monitors have been added via a group and the monitor, and the monitor has been, you know, added to the device through the group. Now I could come here and add a new monitor here if I wanted to, but I, I, I just don't do that. <laughs> um, what you can do here then is you can create the local agent monitor and you can send it to a group. So I'm gonna go to my network devices, go responded devices. So again, I've created the monitor locally, made sure that it works. Okay, cool. I wanna have this on all Synologies. I'm going to send this to the responder devices group. Hit send. I'm going to go to that group. I'm going to refresh this. Uh, do, 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 do. There. So this has added it as a remote monitor on the agent level. And by doing this, this is probably going to add it onto the device as well. Um, but th this is just what happens if you send it to a group because it was an agent based monitor. This remote monitor is going to be added to this group. However, there's a problem. There are no computers in this group to apply this remote monitor onto. So if we look at the member list, my probe is not there because I didn't auto join this group with probes. And that's intentional. So technically this will never get installed. So I just want you to be aware of that. Um, by adding it to the local agent, this is a computer monitor, not a network device monitor. But the reason why I say run it on one is that way you can obviously create your monitor on an agent for one device, one thing, and that way you can see if it works. And then when it does, you would just replicate that onto your actual network device group. So you go to monitors, add, and then you just add it manually there. Cancel, yeah. So I should have had a ticket for this guy, let's have a look. Uh, tickets. No, definitely not that one. Let's have a look. Um,
greater than or equal to zero. Oh, I should have changed that to less than. Yeah, it passes it. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right, my mistake. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and tickets. Oh no, wrong screen. All right, so I'll come back to this monitor. Greater than or equal to 30, which it is. So I want it to be that. Okay, yeah. I... Well, you know, I think one thing going wrong is 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 okay. That's uh, that's not too bad. We'll take that. Well, anyway, when that monitor updates, it will then create me a ticket just to tell me, hey, you know, this is not lower than 30. This is 36. I'll get a ticket. And then obviously I'll have to go do something about that event. So that way it obviously brings the monitor back into a good state. Um, so yeah, um, just to very quickly like bullet point, like the flow of this, it all starts with probe templates. Think of probe templates and the detection rules as um, virus scanners and role detections, right? If this equals DS416, classify it as that. If this equals DSM, classify it as that. Then once you've got your device library configured with a detection template, you then create a search out of that. Then with that search, you can then go ahead and create, um, oh, sorry. You can then create your responded devices group with the responded devices search, which has all of them. Alternatively, if you want, Matt, you can create multiple groups for your multiple manufacturers and just join them with those searches. And then when you install the monitor and you don't quite get there in time with the limit to, um, it's okay. But then again, we did see that the monitors were removed where they weren't relevant, right? And back on the probe agent side of things, when you create new detection templates, just like how you do, um, where are you? Virus scanners, see? Look, they're all in the registry, right? So when you run resend system info and it, you know, updates the name of the AV scanner on the uh, computer management tile, uh, which is, do, 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 do. Oh, not workspace, this guy. This guy, right? To update the name on this AV tile. All we're doing is looking at all of these different scanners and we're running through them in order to see what they are. And here we go, 265, Sentinel agent. And you know, that's, that it works in the same way. So whenever you create a detection template, you don't always have to go here. I mean, obviously it should just work, but just as a little, you know, sanity check, I guess. Um, you can go to your detection templates under probe service. Just do a quick find, you know, Syn. Okay, cool. Synology. There it is. And yep, that looks right. That looks like how I put it into the system. And you're good. Um, you will also find detection templates under the service key. Uh, they are here. You can ignore these. These are just, how can I put this? Think of this area as like a middle ground where they are wrote, but then really it's all running out of this particular uh, detection template branch. So the one on the probe service is the one that you really wanna look for. Don't worry too much about the content or lack of content in the like, keys under service. So it's all probe service. Now, um, I'm going to go back to tickets. Yeah, still no ticket for that thing yet. Probably because the ticket is on the device.
Tell you what, let's do tickets. Ah, got it. Here it is. So there we go. There's a the ticket. So the ticket doesn't attach to the probe. The ticket attaches to the device uh, itself. And we can confirm that. I mean, yeah, it's got the asset there of the probe. That's good. Asset type computer. If we go to the actual device itself, we can then go to its tickets and we should see a ticket, please. Oh, make me out to be a liar. Let's have a look at control. Interesting. I wonder where that ticket went. Well, this is why you have manage anyway. Okay, there it is. It is on the... All right. Sorry, guys. It is on the probe. There it is. I guess that kind of makes sense as well. So, all right. So yeah, there's your ticket uh, for the uh, alert that we just created. So that was an SNMP based remote monitor. So just like how you group applications using searches and then you know create your groups and create your monitors on those groups, you can do just the same as you can with agents, you know, computers with uh, network devices. Um, just to finish off here real quick, this 251 device, this is also a Mikrotik. Um, and I just haven't set up SNMP on this. Um, so what I could do is go to that wireless access point, give it the community string, MK Home Lab, which is what my probe is looking for. And then, um, you know, if I had Mikrotik based, OID monitors, then as I introduce more Mikrotics into my system, they will just inherit, inherit, yeah, that's the word, inherit those um, uh, monitors. So just like how when you onboard new clients and they all have domain controllers, they just pick up the remote monitors. It's exactly the same principle as this.